Here outside the United States Supreme Court, of course, we're going in this morning uh, to hear the arguments on the health care mandate cases. With me is Jordan Seculo, you know him, of the American Center for Law and Justice, Pastor Mike Crowder from the great Christian Life Center in Layton, Utah, and longtime advisor to our ministry. And Jordan, I'm wondering if I could start with you just to help us a little bit. We're laymen, you're the lawyer. You got to tell us what's actually going on sure. here what, legally. Day one is it's the Anti Injunction Act issue. It's an hour and a half oral argument over a law passed in 1867, so after the Civil War. It says a taxpayer's report, you can't challenge a penalty until after it's actually assessed. So you can't actually challenge some tax penalties until you've actually gotten it in the mail. Now, if that is true and applies here, that means that you wouldn't be able to actually challenge the individual mandate, which is what this case is all about tomorrow at the court, until 2015, which means it wouldn't be back to the Supreme Court until 2016. And so the key is, courts have gone either way. Conservative judges and liberal judges have both crisscrossed here whether or not the mandate is a tax penalty or not. If it is, you can see the court actually using that to not really issue a full opinion on the case. Okay, but really, it does get to the the heart of the matter, uh, if it does pass this one hurdle, <laughs> That's right. then it's going to go to the heart of the matter. If that were pulled out, what happens to the Reform Act? The sure. Reform and they Act. have the full case. They will have the full case uh, over the next three days. So tomorrow... Which is unprecedented, by the way, folks. Yeah, right. Normally, you get, uh, you know, one hour on one day. Yeah. And uh, This is the longest Supreme Court case in 60 years. So it tells you how important it is. Six, I mean, there's an hour and a half just on the, it does it, can yep. we hear the case or not? But they're going to move on. Of course, you know, our concern is even beyond that, right. which, which is how this compromises the, the religious convictions, consciences, freedom of organizations like our own. And, Mike, that's why you're here. Of course, obviously, as a pastor, a leader of the council, you're concerned about how this affects religious organizations. Well, absolutely, and we have a large Christian school as well, and so you get into the idea of who can you hire for teachers, who do you have to hire for teachers, and are we allowed to pursue all of our religious beliefs without any persecution or interference? And exactly. So this this has much broader implications. We're going to be explaining that to you, but we're glad to have our lawyer at our side here so that he can interpret it for us. But this is the first test. There are many more to come, including lawsuits that our own National Clergy Council will be signing on to. If, it goes uh, past here, so we'll keep you informed.